Okay, hi. So, I'd like to talk to you about silver as art. Okay, so last night I was invited to the Milwaukee Art Museum. They had a, an exhibit of great paintings of the 20th century. And it's a, an exhibit that travels around. And this one happened to be from all places, Buffalo, New York. It was about 80 wonderful paintings. And we had a, a tour of the exhibit and an art uh, historian came in, explained many of the paintings to us, and I was very impressed. The first painting he showed us, he explained the painting to us, and the part that really impressed me was the price. He said that a similar painting by the same artist sold last year for $175 million. And then we went to the second painting. Again, uh, you know, it was a famous artist. It was a, you know, a well-known painting. And he said that, again, a similar painting sold last year for $195 million. So, anyway, I was impressed with the paintings. I was very impressed with the prices. And it made me think, that what an incredible bargain silver is in this country compared to art. Because the best silver really was art. Okay, so last week I got in these Martelet charger plates. They're from, they're dated on the back 1906. So they came in and charger plates are rare. And let me explain about Martelet. Martelet was made by Gorham from 1898 through the early part of the 20th century. And Martelet means by hand. So they were all handmade, no machinery used whatsoever. Within Martelet, they made a total of about 8,000 total pieces. It was the best of the best. So anyway, I got these plates in and they seem very heavy, beautiful hammering here, and then the design seemed really crisp and well done. And, you know, I was very impressed. Very Japanesque. So Japanesque in the same way that the paintings I looked at from the early 20th century impressed me. The same type of wonderful detail. So, so I did a little research about the plates, and there's this wonderful book, Martelet um, Silver, uh, that came out quite a few years ago. And it's an exhaustive look at Martelet Silver. It attempts to list all 8,000 pieces ever made with a description of the pieces. So on the back of this plate, <clears throat> it has the, the number, which is KXJ. Okay, so you go to the book and you look up KXJ. And here's what it says. All different chasing of witch hazel leaf and flowers, beaten and stamped, uh, made 12 by James Leckenby, Thomas Docker, Alexander Macbeth, last new hollower piece of Martelet, question mark. And then it says, made April 27, 1906, Size, 10 and 1 half inch. Weight, 266 ounces. Making time, 83 ounces. Chaser, Edward Zior Sr., 329 hours, $720. Okay, so several important facts from that. Number one, the price, $720 in 1906. That is... $18,000 in 2015 dollars. So, so they were expensive. I don't think any of the names of the chasers or the makers are anyone that I've ever heard of, so that really didn't make any kind of impression on me. And then it said, last new Martelet piece ever made. Okay, so in 1907, the year after these were made, they simplified and, for cost reasons, made the Martelet process a little less 
intensive. So among collectors, the pieces before 1907 are more desirable. Okay, so special that this was the last piece of the Martelet before the change. Um, the other thing that jumped off the page at me was the chasing time, 320 hours. So I was like, that is an incredibly long time to chase these things, to hand decorate these things. So I decided I was interested. I will start at 1898 when they started making the, this Martelet silver and see how many pieces have more than 320 hours. And I found one vase that was earlier that was over 300 hours and nothing else before 1907 had that kind of time. So of the 5,000 pieces made before 1907, only these and that other piece had that kind of time. Then I looked at the further 3,000 pieces made after it and there were four other items that had this kind of time. So anyway, so I think these are very special. They are beautiful. They have a great Japanese design that really pops. You know, they were, they're almost unique in the amount of time that they took. The price certainly was not inexpensive. And if you look, you can also tell how many of a certain thing they made. They made quite a few bowls, but when you get to charger plates or service plates, they only made 47. And so, so they made very few of these. So it makes me think having these and pricing them at $49,000, which, ooh, it's, it's $49,000, but it's not $195 million, which is the best of the art world. So I think in general, um, great silver is undervalued and it truly is art. Thank you.